Hello everyone, this is Mike and welcome to this episode of Let's Live Code. Uh, today we're going to go ahead and continue working with audio effects and title cycles. And there's a few different effects uh, that we're going to look at today, including tremolo, reverb, shape, and vowels. Um, but before we do that, I thought we'd talk a little bit about working with longer samples. So let me start off with a longer than average sample. This is about four to five seconds in length, the saxophone here. And it sounds like this. So it just sounds like a drone of a saxophone. And you might be asking yourself, well, why is that? And that's because of the way Tidal Cycles handle samples um, when it's activated. It just is going to play through the entire sample before it's released. It's like a one shot. Um, Tidal will go ahead and play one sample every cycle. And the si samples are just overlap over each other. Um, and that's what was playing. So in samplers, you often call that a one shot just because when you hold down the key, the sample is gonna go ahead and play through the entire shot of the sample one time through, regardless of whether or not you're still holding the key down. So in title, um, it's holding down the sample throughout its duration. And this can be sound sloppy, much like it does in that example, just because as the volume gets louder when the samples overlap, and one easy way to stop this would be to cut off the sample as the other one starts. And we can do that with an effect called cut, which is simply stops the sample previously if there's another sample before it. So, so this is just going to truncate the sample. And you can hear that here. So one thing you might have noticed while you're listening to that is that the sample is being truncated every single time that the sample is started. But when we let go of it, it actually played through the entire sample all the way through because there wasn't another sample there to stop it. So just to showcase that, I'm going to uh, put a clap in there and the clap will cut off the saxophone. <laughs> All right, let's go back over now and uh, this sample, since it lasts about four to six seconds long, um, it has a nice sort of feel if you just, we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and put this in the space of two cycles. And to do that, I'm just gonna divide it by two. And that way the cycle is only being played every, sing, every other cycle. So put saxophone, divide by two, and this is what we get. sample plays exactly where we want it to. It fits perfectly within those two cycles. Now, uh, now that we have that, let's go ahead and look at maybe another way that we can shape sound, maybe a, a better way to shape sound than just barbarically cutting something off. Um, while that's good for rhythmic exercises, it's not really great for longer um, samples where we want to kind of shape the sound. And to do this, we're going to apply an envelope. And if you're thinking to yourself right now, well, an envelope isn't an audio effect, you're absolutely right. It's actually a control parameter. Um, and the way I like to think of control parameters is um, it's really a way to automate something on a synthesizer. If I don't want to move something on a synthesizer with my hand, then I, you know, I typically I would send one of two things to it. I'd either send an envelope generator to it or a low frequency oscillator. And envelopes are ways of controlling lots of things. Uh, you don't have to just control, you know, volume with with an uh, envelope generator. It can control the resonance of a filter, uh, the cutoff of a filter, the speed of an LFO, but the most common way that we do use it is to control amplitude or volume. So that's what this means in Tidal. And Tidal gives us an ASR envelope to control the sound, um, which stands for attack, sustained, release. Um, and that envelope is tied to volume. So we're gonna go ahead and do that by hashtag attack. And I'm just gonna go ahead and give it a setting of one, um, hashtag hold, and I'll give that a setting of one and then hashtag release and I'll also give that a setting of one. And so just before I play this, what we're really saying though is that we have one second of attack, which means that the sound is gonna grow from silence to full volume over the course of a second. Hold is gonna hold that full volume out for the duration of a second. And then the last parameter release is going to release the sound from full volume back down to nothing. Um, and when we played it, it sounds like this. All 
All right, well, let's go ahead and play with this envelope a little bit. Let's do something that's more percussive. And to do that, I'm going to need more samples. So I'm going to have 10 saxophone samples being triggered. And then I'm going to put a really, really short envelope on that. All right, maybe not the most musical example of anything I've ever done, just a repeating saxophone. Um, over and over again, but we can actually add other effects to this. So if we wanted to change the note of the saxophone, an easy way to do that would be with the speed, um, the speed effect, which is going to affect the playback speed of it. So if we can think about this for a second, a sound that's moving twice as fast, if I had something that's 100 hertz and I doubled that to 200 hertz, well, that's going to go up an octave. So every time I have playback speed of one, it is going to play the original sample. If I have a playback speed of two, it is going to double the speed, which is going to make everything go up an octave. If I have three, it'll go up an octave and a fifth. And we get something that sounds like this. And now we're up an octave. And now we're up an octave and a fifth. And you can hear now we're just going up the harmonic series. If we're looking to get specific notes out of speed, one of the things that we can do then is just to pattern out a different playback for every single one of these notes. Since we have 10 different saxophones being played in a cycle, if you put 10 different values down for those notes, we can pattern something out. And now that we have these notes, um, we can get a lot more mileage out of our attack decay um, envelope just because we have more notes to play with. So let me show you what that would sound like really quick. So you can see that we get a lot of mileage, a lot of variations out of just one sample and two effects um, just by enveloping it and by using the speed of the playback. So with that being said, uh, let's go back and reset this to the more percussive envelope shape that we had before and see what we have here. Good. I think everything's ready now. I have this effect. Uh, the next effect that I want to talk about is reverberation. And reverberation is basically making the sound sound like it's in a room of some sort. And to do that, we need two parameters in order to use that room. Uh, the first one is going to be the room. And the second one is going to be the uh, size of the room. So the first one, let's go ahead and put hashtag room. And I'm going to just go ahead and put in a 0 0.5 volume right now. And the other one is hashtag size. And I'm going to do the same thing and put in 0 0.5. And we have a sound that sounds like this. Great. And now that sounds like it's in a space, maybe a small bathroom with a lot of tile. Um, what these two things are doing, room is controlling the amount of the signal that's being fed back into the filter. So if I have zero, then it's a completely dry signal. If I have one, it's completely wet. Okay, and then size refers to the decay time of the reverb. And like delay, the closer we get to one, uh, the higher the chance that we're going to run into feedback problems.
All right, that's uh, sometimes I'll reset the size of it just to stop the tail so we can go on and do something else. That's what I was doing right there. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is look at an effect called tremolo. And to do that, actually, we're going to go back to our original saxophone that was going every other cycle. And we're going to get rid of all this enveloping and speed and reverberation. So it's just a plain Jane saxophone sound and the way we'd love it to be. Great. I just wanted to play that so your ears get a chance to um, remind you what that sounds like. So when we start to change it, you'll understand. So tremolo, tremolo is a type of amplitude modulation, and we're controlling the rate and depth of volume with an LFO. And we have two parameters. Uh, the first parameter that we're going to use is going to be the tremolo rate. So if I put hashtag trem, and you can start to see right there that there is tremolo rate or trem r. They're both the same thing. I'm going to use trem r because I like short words. And then uh, we're going to also do hashtag tremolo depth is the other one. And I'm going to go ahead and just uh, set some default values for this. So amplitude modulation basically means that we're turning, we're changing the volume or the amplitude of the sound. And we're changing this once every second. It's turning all the way on and all the way off, which is why you have that sort of beating sound with it. Um, the rate then refers to how many times a second that we're changing that. So right now it's one time a second. If I put two, And when you start going into the audio rate, it almost sounds like there's this multiphonic saxophone growl that's coming out of it, which is a really kind of fun sound for that. Okay, and now that we have that, let's go back and just reset that to one. All right, and let me show you what not to do. Um, let's go ahead and just start playing with the tremolo depth, and we'll go ahead and put some values in there, much like we did... Um, with tremolo rate, and I think you'll start to see that it has very little effect. So why is this? Um, well, if Zero means that there's no volume, and one means that there's full volume. So anything past one is really just ignored, and the effect does nothing. So tremolo is really more effective when you blend it into the original signal. And the way we do this, then, is to get some sort of value that's between zero and one that lets us control the wet and dry mix of the original signal. So... And what's fun about this is that even that's a real sample, um, it actually sounds more real because there's variation now in the way that the saxophone player is blowing air into the saxophone, right? It's almost like he's adding a little bit of vibrato. And we can continue to sort of polish this uh, to make it even more realistic. All right, and the last effect that we're going to be looking at is something called vowel. And what vowel is, it's a formant filter. And the idea of a formant filter really is to mimic the harmonic spectra that's usually found in the human voice. And this happens uh, courtesy of some bandpass filters that are sort of set to very specific frequencies. Uh, in the following sample, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set each cycle to be a different vowel sign. We can do that with the greater than, less than symbols. So all I have to do then is put in the different vowel signs in case A, E, I, O, and U. 
and that the first time that this cycle will go through, um, it'll sound like the saxophone player is playing the saxophone, but almost humming the word ah as it's going through. And then the next time it goes through, he, he'll be playing the saxophone, but humming the word o oh, and e, eh, e, i, o, and all of the vowel sounds. So it's kind of a fun way to change the timbre and the texture of the sound. Um, and it's, it's a really great way to make his, a single sample sound different multiple times. Um, let's go ahead and listen to what that sounds like right here with vowel. So we have ah, uh, eh, eh, o, u. All right, and then the last thing I want to do is to give you a more mature example of something that throws everything that we did in this single lesson into a, um, a live coding example, something more akin to what you might use in a performance kind of setting, right? Where we have multiple strands of multiple lines of music. We have a saxophone line um, that's going every four cycles. It has a long delayed envelope. So um, it's going up and down over a course of four seconds. Uh, there's reverberation, which is up pretty high. There is the speed of sound, which I'm playing with. So uh, the first time it'll be normal sound, um, the next time it'll be up, third time it'll be down, and then there's tremolo, rate, and depth, and vowel. And then we have a basic beat and some bass drum. folks. I think that's going to do it for this episode of Let's Live Code. Um, if you liked what you saw here, go ahead and hit like and subscribe. Um, if you have any comments, questions, concerns, complaints, death threats, or hate mail, uh, please send them to me or leave them in the messages below. And uh, we will continue on looking at some audio effects in the next episode of Let's Live Code. And I hope to see you there. Take care.